He's running. Go over here. Hey, Hal. Hey, Hal. How are things going for you? Good. A, good. A, a stunning entrance. Come on in here. Have a seat. I just want to say hi. Hi, everybody. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's well, just, a just good don't group get thing. close to the people in the middle over there. Yeah, from middle. Oh. Yeah. yeah, we'll tell you about that later, okay? All right. We'll I explain can't wait. it later. Okay. Yeah. Hi. I like that look. Now, that's the first Which thing I noticed look? when you this walked look, in. Charlie? Yeah, no, no, no. I hadn't seen you in a while. The beard. Yeah. You know, it's looking good. That's an attempted uh, goatee Van Dyke type object. It's my first, really. I've never done this before. Right. What got you in the mood to try something new like that? Uh, I think I got, I got off the road and. Uh, Getting ready for a show every night, you get real appearance conscious. And being home for the first week or so, I didn't shave at all. And then I got kind of sculptural with it. So. Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> interesting. Do you have a, I guess you have a lot of people commenting about it whenever you change something about yourself. I mean, I, I got kind of bored with myself and I just cut my hair all off. Yeah, it looks and, good. Well, well, certainly, people, yeah, people observe when people see you on, the, on television or. Yeah, if they know who mm -hmm. you are, they always are objective about your changes of appearance. But this gives you, does it give you a new attitude, you think? Um, yeah, um, reading less and think I know more somehow. Yeah. <laughs> he looks very I do this smart. Well. Ponderous. Or, very you intelligent. Ponder, yeah, Amusing. Yeah, hey, well, smart. I know you're smart because you're such a big fan of Delbert McClinton. I mean, what, hey. what a great talent. I know he's oh, a big yeah. buddy of oh, yours. You like Delbert. I know. He's a go. Uh, what, what is it that impresses you about the well, man? Well, <clears throat> when I lived in Texas, uh, I lived behind an old dance hall called Green Hall. And I used to hear Delbert, the, the music of this powerful band and Delbert singing over the top of it, coming out of that place all the time. Yeah. And, uh, and when I aspired to do this, one of the first shows I ever opened uh, was for Delbert McClinton in Texas. It was one of a very important thing to me. So, yeah, I'm a big fan. Yeah, well, actually, you know, you thought you heard him in the nightclub. He was actually on a cruise ship about 600 <laughs> miles off the coast over there. <laughs> Probably so. It carries across the water. The, yeah. blue, the blues will carry across the water. <laughs> yes, it does. Would well, you enjoy this, this cruise scene as much as Delbert does? I liked it very much. I had a, a real nice time. It's a lovely old vessel, and, and it's got observation decks all the way around it. And you really get out there and watch the sun come up. Or mm -hmm. I got out there during a big, kind of a nice big storm we had one morning. And, and uh, rode, rode it, and it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it very much. Okay, I did that once, yeah, yeah. and for the next three hours, mm -hmm. I'm talking really? overboard. Did oh, really? you get sick? Not yeah. at all. No, I did you didn't? not. No. Now, you're a big outdoorsman. In fact, tomorrow on TNN, you're part of the big Buckmaster jam, right? Uh, yeah, I played a show in Atlanta mm -hmm. for the Buckmaster uh, bow hunters. Deer hunting folks, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so had what, a good time. What kind of an outdoorsman are you? Do you like the water? Do you like the woods? Uh, I like the woods very much. I grew up uh, in in big woods, and my father, particularly, and my brother uh, uh, were avid outdoorsmen and hunters and, and fishermen. And, and uh, I love to fly fish, and, and mm -hmm. uh, I love to fish. In, in There's a, a feeling sense. of serenity out there, isn't there? Well, the bottom line is that that up until a hundred years ago, it was. It was relatively easy to go walk with nature and feel like you. A lot of us wake up now and we, we walk across the carpet, we put our shoes on, we walk down a concrete sidewalk, we get in our car, we drive out here, we do our thing. We never mm -hmm. even touch the earth. We're not even True. on it, if you will. So, never thought about that. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, philosophically, it's a, it's a lovely thing to go out and get in touch with yourself. Though. Get in touch with the earth, too. Yeah. Mother Sir. earth. What, do, what does that yep. do for your songwriting? Do you think that, well, that helps I think you it's part, Again, it's been part of my life so long. Uh, you know, that it's it's just kind of part of who I am. My okay, as, far as, outlook, yeah. as far as songwriting, you have a song that's in a movie coming up, right? Oh, Something yeah. to Talk About. It's already out. Yeah, yeah, it's a film called Something to Talk About. Uh, Julie Roberts and Robert Duvall. And, Dennis Quaid. Uh, Dennis Quaid. It's, Love great it. it's, real. it's a good movie. Yeah, I think it's now, a good, this, fine piece of cinema. Uh, is that and a thank song? Thank goodness there's a song in right well, in the middle of it. Say, yeah, I was going to say, did they select the song? Had you already done it, or did you do it for the movie? They sent me a script, and it's it's kind of, I've done it, I did it for the Maverick soundtrack, for the Maverick film, and they, they sent me a, a, a script to this, wonderfully written script to this mm -hmm. film, something to talk about. And, uh, and I wrote about the character, kind of about Julia Roberts' character and her dilemma in the film, uh -huh. specifically. So it was, it was a challenge, and, and uh, it worked out. Will this lead to other movies? Well, I hope so, yeah. I mean, I, I do get scripts and, and attempt this on a fairly regular basis. It's wonderful wow. when it works you out. You want to try acting, too. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> no. There's enough of them, I think, and there, there's a lot of good ones. And, and uh, I've, I don't know. You know, I think if you know how to write songs and sing, that's probably a pretty good gift. I'd kind of stay with that. Stick with it. Yes, right. Not to be tacky, but when you think of movies, you think of big-time money. 
Yeah. Do you make a lot of money when you write a song for a movie, like something um, to talk about? Well, you know, I don't need all the money, so I don't really think about things in that context really at all. Don't. No, I don't. I, the, I think one of the worst things in the world to do is to, to brag on mm -hmm. um, your financial uh, good fortune. Some of you will come and, and uh, remove and it from it you, you know. I'm, I'm more inclined to just be thankful for the work and perpetuate. For well, what, whatever And yeah, the mailbox okay. money, will, I figure I can hobble down to the mailbox in 15 years, and, sure. and I'll be very thankful for that well, yeah, money. Yeah, you just want to make <laughs> yeah, enough really? money. You want to make yeah. enough money to buy popcorn and drinks when you go see the movie. Yeah, I want, no, I want to make enough so I can walk off that farm and say, I'm going to work, dear, and walk down the path to the mailbox and get that BMI check. <laughs> yes, yeah, and bring it and go back home. Oh, I buy a brush to... hog once in a well, while. You know, it's, it's it's amazing. Hank Williams Jr. told me that once, that if he had wanted to not be a creative person, mm -hmm. he could have walked to the mailbox, collected his daddy's well, checks for his whole life. Yes. And uh, he said he would rather be creative. I yeah. thought that was interesting. Yeah. Well, your creativity really shines on this. Every Little Word, name of the album, from Thank Hal you. Ketchum, who returns later. He'll be doing some music with Delbert, too. We'll be right back.